Hey gang, Jeff here with MissionMusician.com and today I have another video for you. And this video is going to be on how to mix bass. Uh, now, this is going to be kind of a weird video because you can see here, I don't have any plugins at all on this song. It's completely unmixed, so I'm not really mixing in context of the mix, but I want to show you some of the things that I like to do uh, with bass that helps it in a mix. Um, so again, this, you know, this may or may not be helpful. I'm just going to show you a few tricks uh, that I've learned over the years. And I'm tr also trying to decide if I want to do another mix series uh, with this song in particular. Uh, I have two mix series up on YouTube already, and both of them are over three hours long. I think one of them is even over four hours long. Uh, so I... I don't know how helpful these videos are. If it would be just more, if it would be more helpful for me to just show quick little videos or a full-on walkthrough. Uh, and the reason why they're so long is because I, t I talk so much through them. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking uh, less talky, more showy. But in my opinion only, uh, it doesn't do me any good, and it doesn't do you any good if I just walk through a mix that I've already completed and just say, hey, you know, I pulled the guitars down. I pulled some EQ down at 392. Um, that's not very helpful um, unless I show you why I did what I did. So that is why I talk so much and... Uh, Hopefully some of you out there uh, understand that. I know a lot of people just want to see, you know, what did you do to make it sound that way? Well, if I don't tell you why, it's not really going to be helpful. Because if you go in and you pull 300 hertz down on your guitar, you might not have the same effect. So anyway, here I go rambling again. Uh, <laughs> let's just get started. How about that? So let's listen to the bass really quick. Um, actually, I'm going to play just a few seconds of the song, and uh, it's not really going to be too helpful because, like I said, this is completely unmixed, all raw track. Got what he wants and needs in a sense. Traded up the price of attention until he's died. Watched her all. Right, so right now, the piano and the bass are fighting for the low end, and I would definitely roll the low end off of the piano because it doesn't need to be in there for this particular song. Uh, so again, we're going to be mixing this bass in the context of solo, which is never a great idea, but we're going to do it. And the very, very first thing I want to do to the bass uh, that I normally always do is put on a virtual tape machine from Slate Digital. Now you don't have to have this plug in to mix bass. I'm just showing you uh, what I actually do when I mix bass. Um, this is a subtle effect but um, if you've watched any of my other videos you know that I absolutely love this plug in. Uh, so let's listen and see what we can do with this. Alright, so in the FG9 position on this plugin, it's giving it a little bit more girth. Uh, in the FG456, it's giving it a little bit more mid. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one I like better by flipping through it. I 
think I'm going to go with FG456. Um, and before I EQ, I just want to um, share with you a, a common mistake that I used to make uh, when I was younger and just starting out in mixing. Um, my thought process would be, oh, it's a bass. It needs bass. <laughs> Well, it's a bass for a reason. It already has bass. Um, so I would go in and I would, you know, just boost the bass up and give it a bunch of low end. And that's not really helpful because it already has low end. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting a little boost down here somewhere to uh, make it fuller. Uh, but I don't necessarily know that this bass is going to need it. Um, so let's... Let's continue on here. I'm going to throw on VMR. And it's probably going to take a while to load up because it's the first instance of VMR. And it always takes a while to load up on my computer. And I have no idea why. All right. So let's start with the FG73 and see what this does. This is a preamp um, from the Slate collection. A pre emulation, I should say. I'm going to turn this up. Not sure I'm liking what that's doing. I'm gonna bring in the FG76. Alright, let's leave that on there for now. And let's grab an EQ. Actually, let me grab the VCC, the virtual console collection, and I'm gonna drive it up just a little bit. Um, to try to get some mojo going here. Let's see what happens. get an EQ going here let's try the FGS and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and roll the bass up to around uh, 70 and you may be asking yourself well it's a bass why do you want to roll that up well, it's kind of genre specific like if this was a rap song I might not do that uh, but in pop and modern rock, I like to roll the bass guitar up to around 70 because I want room for my kick. I don't want my kick and bass competing. I like my bass living around 80 to 100 hertz on the low end and my kick from 50 to 70 hertz. I like the kick to be the very bottom. Now, in your mix, you may not like that. You may want the bass to be the very bottom. Um, and you know you may want to boost your kick at 100 hertz and you know maybe do a cut in the bass at 100 hertz it's up to you this is just how i like to personally mix and i like the, the kick drum to be that low weight in the song so that is why i am doing it uh let's see around 70 that should be fine and now i'm gonna go look for some mud to cut out here Sounds really junky right there. I'm going to cut that frequency out. And I'm feeling like there's something really low that sounds bad. Uh, I'm going to boost this way up and try to find it.
And the one thing, I, <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing that I don't like about cutting with this EQ is I don't know how wide this bell is. So I'm actually going to take this off and let me see. I may bring in another EQ to do a cut. Let's see here. Um, no, I think I'm going to bring in another instance of FGS because I am hearing something in the low mids that I want to get rid of. Let me boost this up and tighten the cue just a little bit. And I just realized that's not going to help me because it doesn't go down below 100 or below 200. So, uh, <laughs> this is why sometimes these EQs are a little bit limited. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Hey, what happened to my virtual tape machine? Am I just not up all the way? Uh, I must have accidentally got rid of it. Sorry about that. And Pro Tools is freezing up on me, so just give me a second here. All right, there we go. Let me put VTM back on. I'm sorry. Two track four twenty five. All right. So I am going to find this frequency that is annoying the crap out of me, and it's somewhere between a hundred and two hundred. Um, that sounds really murky. <sighs> thinking well you're taking some of the fullness away from the bass and you're right if you're thinking that I am taking a little bit of fullness away from the bass but that murkiness is making the bass sound muddy and when I take this away it makes the bass sound deeper to me so I'm gonna leave it and um, I'm going to try to find something in the high end that we can use to boost. Let's see here. For the fun of it, let's bring in Revival and see what happens with Revival. And you know what? Just bear with me. I don't use this too often. But I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bypass Revival for a second. And I just want to see what Lift does to this.
yeah, I like what that's doing. So let's bypass these plugins really quick, and you should be able to hear that the bass gets much deeper. And actually, it does get fuller with uh, lift on it. So let's listen really quick. Yeah, so I like what that's doing. Uh, let's see. Let's do some compression now. Uh, I'm just going to pull up a preset called Rock Bass. And I'm going to listen to what this does. And what I am going to watch for is the release to make sure the release gets back before the compression for the next note hits. Um, and the attack is set at a slow. I may mess with that. And we got a four to one ratio. Let's listen to what it's doing. That's a little too much compression. I'm going to back down the threshold some. All right. So let's bypass all this and bring it in. Right, so it sounds a lot fuller. And one thing that I failed to mention when I first started uh, rambling <laughs> at the beginning of this video is out of all of the instruments, uh, out of all the mixes I've done and the instruments I've mixed, bass has always, always been the hardest instrument for me to mix uh, because it's very important for it to sit right in the mix. Um, it has to be steady and it has to uh it has to be heard it's the one you know basses most bass players have a hard time playing evenly through the whole song and it's not their fault it's just it's just the way it is um so bass is when you record it it's a very very dynamic instrument um some notes will be softer will be plucked softer uh, than other notes because most bass players use their fingers and it's hard to get a consistent um, pull on the string every single time so and it actually would sound funny especially on these little bass runs that are in here it would sound funny if you know he plucked them as hard as he did the other strings so we have to use compression to even it out um, and I may even I've done this several times is use uh, two compressors uh, and you know what actually let me bring in the FG 16 now I could up the ratio of ah, let me get this over here I could up the ratio of this um, 
but I like to use compression in series. I don't want one compressor doing too much compression. And I'm not even going to hit this one hardly at all. And let's see. Slow attack, fast release. That should be good. So I'm just doing a little bit of compression on this. And another trick is to parallel compress the bass. And you know what? Let's just try that really quick. Um, so what I would do is I would send a copy of the bass to a new track. Uh, mono Auxiliary Sin. And I'm going to call it uh, P Bass for Parallel Compressed Bass. And I'm going to send it Pre-Fader. So this fader has no effect on this track. And I'm going to send a full copy of it. And I'm just going to solo this. And I'm going to throw a compressor on it. And I'm going to actually kind of really crush it. Um, let's just use a stock compressor for the fun of it. Bring this over here. I'm going to set kind of a slower attack. Eh, maybe I'll set let's see a really slow attack here and a kind of fast release and let's go with four to one and let's see what we can do here All right, so that's bringing all the notes uh, close to the same level. Now, then we can blend that in with the original bass. Let's listen to that little run part without the parallel compressed uh, bass and then bring it in. I just want to see if it's making a difference. And that may be something that I have to automate up anyway, but I want these fills to be heard because they're they're pretty cool. It's making a little bit of difference. I don't know that I would use uh, parallel bass on this song. Matter of fact, let's just listen. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more and then let's bypass it. Okay, so it is making a difference, um, but I am going to delete that for now. I just wanted to show you a little parallel processing trick, and I'm going to show you another little parallel processing trick right now. So I'm going to send this to a new track, and what I want to do is just show you different ways that can you can try different things to help your bass track out, to help it cut and sit in the mix. Uh, let's call this bass distortion. All right. And again, I'm going to send it pre fader, a full copy, and I'm going to pull up Sans Amp. And there's a little preset on here called Crunchy Bass that I normally start out with, but I always tweak. And actually, I'm sorry, before I do that, there's one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to add an EQ on here, and I'm going to roll 
I'm going to high pass filter up to 250 because I don't want the low, low end to be distorted. I just want, I'm looking to get some mid range bite here. So let's solo this. <laughs> So that sounds pretty nasty. Let's blend that in. Now, when I blend distortion in, most times I'm not looking to be able to hear the distortion in the context of the mix. All it's doing is adding saturation to the bass to make it cut through more and to make it sit in the mix. That's all it's doing. Now I could play it in this mix, but it's not really going to have any effect because the song isn't mixed. But for the fun of it, let's go ahead and listen. I'm sorry about that. I had to pause the video. My daughter came down here and was talking. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, you can't really tell in the context of this mix if it's doing anything because everything's muddy and unclear because the song is unmixed. Uh, so maybe in a future video, I'll go into more detail as I'm mixing a song if I decide to do that, uh, if I decide to put another mix series up. So let me show you another trick. Uh, let me delete this. Now... This trick actually requires a plugin, but it's not an expensive plugin. It's actually a free plugin, but you have to buy the package for it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute if I can stop talking and do something here. I'm going to call this Bass Amp. And again, I'm going to send pre fader and a full copy. Oops. And I'm going to bring in, uh, what is it called? Amplitude 3, uh, which I believe is actually free to download, I think. It's been a while since I've downloaded this. And the bass amps in here uh, aren't very expensive, and they're actually pretty good. Uh, let's see. So I have the Ampeg series, and I'm going to grab this, and let me see where I'm at here. Let me solo this, and I'm going to bypass this so we can listen to the signal. All right, now I'm going to turn on the amp simulation. Right? And that sounds pretty good. But we sometimes what we have to do is we got to flip the phase on this. Um, and let's find out if we have to do that right now. I'm going to bring, I'm going to play the original bass and then I'm going to solo this along with the original bass. And if it starts to sound thinner, then I got to flip the phase. So let's listen. <laughs> So it doesn't sound thinner, so I don't have to flip the phase. All right, so let's blend this in. Mm -hmm. 
So that's given a more round tone um, when I blend it in with the other bass. Uh, I don't always do this trick either. Uh, I do sometimes, uh, and sometimes it can actually get a little confusing as to what sounds best when you're doing this. Uh, so it's just something you have to experiment with. Um, and then the very last thing I want to show you is another parallel compression trick. And let me delete this and delete this. And I'm going to send to a new track mono and I'm going to call this bass low so if we want to feel some more low end in the bass without adding a bunch of uh, gain with EQ what we can do is we can take an EQ and let me just get a 7 band and I'm going to uh, low pass all the way down to 250. Actually, let's just go down to 200 and listen. All right, so that sounds not great by itself, but what we're doing is we're compressing really hard the low end to tighten it up, and we're gonna blend it in with the original bass uh, sound. Let's, let's listen here. So that's going to keep that bass in one spot, um, and you know, there's it, it compresses it so it keeps it up in your face, uh, and then you just blend it in under the original bass track, like I've done here, and that really helps out. Now, again, I may use some of these tricks uh, on a song. I may not use any of them on a song. I may use all of them on a song. It's just really song specific. But I wanted to give you some different perspectives of how you can mix a bass guitar and get different tones and do different things with it. Um, because bass is uh, a little tricky to mix and it's difficult to get right. And another thing sometimes that I like to do, I didn't realize I said that was going to be the last thing, but... I like to do some complementary EQ with guitars. So let's say, for instance, I don't know if this guitar is even playing here. So, for example, and this is just going to be a really quick example. Let me put this in the center. If I was, let's find some. Uh, nastiness in this guitar if we can. So for instance, if I was cutting around 433 on the guitars, what I may do, and I've, I have done this in the past, is this is the bass bus here. I'm going to just pull up a, uh, a 
uh, EQ and go to 433 and just boost it a little bit. How much did I cut that by? 2.6, so let's boost this by 2.6. All right, so what that does is give uh, 6 dB swing almost uh, 2.6 2.6 uh, you know 5.2 dB swing of uh, the guitar having its own space and the bass uh, still having some mid-range presence because you in in modern rock you don't want um, let me think how we can phrase this in modern rock you kind of want some mid-range in the bass um, to drive the song. The bass and the guitar are driving this. I'm sorry, the bass and the drums are driving the song. Uh, so I tend to mix a little bit of mid-range, uh, either it's actually a couple different ways, either through saturation or through parallel processing, or actually just through EQ sometimes. So that is one way you can create some space for the bass and the guitar so they have their own space is use some complimentary EQ as well um, and that's the final little trick I want to show you in this video and I appreciate you sticking through watching this uh, I realize that it's probably not the most uh, helpful video in the context of a song but I did want to show some tricks to mixing bass and maybe one of these will help you get your bass to sit right in your mix okay so if you like these type of videos please subscribe to my channel and actually go to my channel because there are plenty of videos uh, already up i think i have over 40 vid videos up on mixing and mastering and stuff like that and so subscribe and go to the channel and watch some of the videos also uh, if you would, go over to Mission Musician. I'm giving away a free bundle. And I also, also wanted to make mention that I am actually posting more mix videos and mastering videos and marketing videos for your band over on the blog. Um, actually, I, I have more videos over there than I do on YouTube. So if you want more free training... Uh, just go over to the blog and check out some of the stuff that I have posted up over there. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. See you in another video soon.